Look at this code. And now look at this one. What's the difference? They're doing the same thing, but the second form is much shorter than the first one. So what's the difference? The difference is in the design of the other class these pieces of code are calling. Fluent interface design, that is the secret ingredient that will turn entire methods on the calling end into one-liners. Stay with me through the demo. I will now show you how you can implement fluent interface design in your own classes so to make them much more comfortable to work with. This is the demo application modeling a bookstore. There is one nice feature here which is regarding that code you saw and which I want to improve now. Each of the elements in the list of books is a link to details or to another filter the list of books. A slightly differently formatted list of suggested books we see here. Still, every element here is a well-formed link. I have developed this entire feature, but I'm not satisfied with the code I ended up with. In this video, I will improve that code and you will see it will be the fluent interface that will help me most. And what is that fluent interface? You're using it all the time. Link is fluent, it is made that way. When you obtain a sequence or a collection, you can apply the next link operator while ignoring all operations that precede. Fluent design is easier when the underlying classes are immutable, but that is not the strict requirement. Fluent builders, such as query builders, are mutable by design. But hey, where is the code I wanted to show you? This is the set of types that are defining elements of those hyperlinks you saw in the application. Each element in the UI either represents an author rendered as a link to the book of that author, or a book rendered as the link to the details of that book, or just plain text. And this class citation represents the entire block, which might consist of multiple individual hyperlinks. That is the class I want to change, I want to improve it. A citation is a list of various citation segments. The citation is built out of parts, and this class citation is in a way a builder, though its name is not communicating that explicitly. It allows us to add one or more segments to the list, or to join multiple citations separated with a separator segment. This is like string join only for citation segments, my custom polymorphic type. If you noticed those comma separated authors in the UI, this is the method that created them. This join overload is the workhorse of this useful class. Maybe you're not able to tell what's wrong with this class by just reading its text. But let me show you that code you saw at the very beginning and you will start noticing what I'm seeing already. There are several formatters in this project which are converting a sequence of authors of a book into a citation. This one, it is citing the authors in the form we find in articles and academic press. It is a dense format and I used it in the book details page to just save space on the screen. But a look at its implementation. Here I'm applying list patterns to map the list of authors. When there are none, it maps to an empty citation. One requires no transformation. However, two authors are a special case. I needed an entire helper method to cover it. Adding one author, then a comma and a space followed by the second author. It goes similarly with more than one author. That is the next helper method and the code is too long, too complicated for my taste. I know I can make it simpler than this. If this case is to take one outer, add a comma and then the other outer, then why is my code reading so differently from that? Why is it not just an outer, a comma and an outer as the request says it? That would be the fluent interface, you see? And that's what I'm not having here. I want that. So we focus our attention on the class which is providing this kind of service, that citation class we saw before. Fluent methods differ from those that are not fluent 
in that they always return an object, an object that will be able to receive the next call in the chain. A non-fluent interface would mutate the object, that is what the mutable add method is already doing. Now, I will strongly suggest you to try to make your fluent interface classes immutable. We do make fluent mutable builders, for example, but there we see clear benefits from making them mutable. Unless there is a reason to make your class, your fluent class, mutable, I would suggest you to consider immutable design first. Thus, I will start turning this class immutable by making it contain an immutable list. That will immediately reduce the number of ways an object can be instantiated. This private constructor will do it all. And let me remind you that you can download the entire source code from this demo by becoming a patron. Come visit my Patreon page and get access to all the source code from all the videos on my channel. I will now point all external callers to a static factory property, which I am conveniently calling empty. That brings us to the substance. The add method, it will be immutable, returning a new citation object. And then look, its own body will become fluent. It is so because immutable collections are implementing the fluent interface of their own. The overload will sustain a similar change. Now I remember that calls to these methods will be chained, and so I think that the name append might better communicate their purpose. The next method to fix is join. I will retain the imperative implementation, only adapted to use the fluent append methods. And that is all. This part was easy, wasn't it? We have an immutable class with the fluent interface. The code length remains about the same, maybe a few lines shorter, but that change is tectonic and it will affect all other classes in the project which are building citations and there are quite a few of them here. This one is among the most complex ones. Needlessly complex, I must protest. Its core functionality is fairly simple. When there are no authors, it must be an empty citation. When there is one author, that author is the citation. I'm introducing a helper method for this transformation. But with two authors, that is where the fluent interface will start shining bright. Cite the first author, then append a comma, and append the second author cited. Not too good, admittedly. But you can now use your other talents to improve this code. This list pattern expression operates on person objects, but we are in fact appending individual citations. Another helper method will pre-process persons and let us deal with citations throughout the entire mapping. At the expense of one additional conversion to an array, we attain absolute simplicity. What say you now? Did I not promise you the author followed by a comma and another author? Code doesn't come any simpler than this. Let me give you the last arm in the mapping, the first author followed by et al, a common abbreviation in academic press. And now the question. Do you know what this entire mapping is doing? Of course you know, it does what it says it does. This method is now literally the same as its explanation in English. And this ugly pile of imperative code, a dozen lines, curly braces, making it look even worse. Go to meet your maker, I never liked that part anyway. This is the entire class. Oh, now I see what I did in its public method. Conversion to array happened even earlier than I thought. Surprises never end. I just made this class even simpler. <laughs> that is it. The fluent interface in its finest. Reducing two full-blown methods down into two lines of code. And not just any code. Code that literally spells out its intention. That is the fluent interface design, a cheap and simple technique to implement, but one with profound effects on every class that depends on it. I hope that you have learned a valuable lesson from this demonstration. Visit my Patreon page, join my channel and enjoy other videos I have made for you.